Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Cornegy. I'm the Animal Care Manager here at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast. This is my lovely partner in crime. I'm Tracy Harris. Tracy is a volunteer for the shelter. Um, how long have you been volunteering, Tracy? Uh, this August, it'll be 10 years. Awesome. Tracy's been here for 10 years um, doing her part for free to help uh, the rabbits and other small animals uh, here at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast. Um, today we're talking about bunnies. Um, we've got some uh, some homies hopping around in here with us. Uh, we're actually in the cat get acquainted room, uh, feature room rather. We're uh, super blessed to be able to get almost all of our cats um, out for foster or adoption during this time. So we're kind of using this area to let them hop around and have fun. We also have some um, baby celebrity uh, bunnies here with us, which are actually Tracy's um, foster babies. They're about six and a half weeks old. Um, they're super cute and um, we're just, uh, you know, waiting for them to get a little bit bigger and weaned from mama. Oh, say hi. <laughs> Hello, Esmeralda. This is Esmeralda. She's a Florida white and that's her bottom. You, you can't meet the baby bunny. No, you can't. Um, so they're just going to uh, get, get a little bit bigger, and a little bit older, and then we're going to get them spayed and neutered, microchipped, um, and then they're going to come up for adoption. So it's kind of just a Q&A talk, kind of just chatting it up. Tracy and I work really well together. We kind of just bop back and forth um, yep. with each other. So I've got kind of some talking points. You guys uh, feel free to ask questions at any time, and we'll break um, here and there to answer your questions. Um, please note that this awesome uh, little segment is um, sponsored by our good friends at Gainesville Rabbit Rescue and Patty Brandt. Yay, Patty! Yay! We love all of our rescue partners and all of our um, our, our folks that uh, look out for the rabbits and the small exotics because, as you know, and if you don't, now you do, rabbits are the third most surrendered animals in animal shelters and rescues across the United States. And that's sad and that's staggering and we've got to put a stop to that. So we're here to educate, we're here to chat, we're here to um, bounce feedback off of you because we just had Easter and hopefully we can stop all of those um, surrenders and um, unexpected pregnancies and, and bad behaviors now. So. Hi, Merida. If you can see Merida. Oh, oh. she's running. Oh, Merida is uh, our friends. Um, Esmeralda, Esmeralda and Merida. And Merida. Uh, they're kind of hopping around, but these guys uh, were actually dropped off in our night drop box. Um, so we do not know where they came from. However, they were filled with um, fermites and lice, and they were really dirty, and it was super sad. Um, so they actually have, oh, we're having a snack, <laughs> have come a long way, and they're available for adoption now. Um, so they're hanging out here. Um, okay, so let's get right into it. Um, Tracy, yes, ma'am. What do you think about carrots for rabbits? Carrots make a wonderful snack for rabbits um, in very small doses. Right. Um, probably no more than like a nickel size piece um, as a snack and not even every day. They are very high in sugar um, and some rabbits actually don't do well with all the sugar. So as a snack, they're a great thing. The tops are good almost any time, um, but the carrot itself, just a snack. So. That's a little, you know, myth for you. You guys see Bugs Bunny chewing on a carrot. You see the Easter Bunny always has carrots. So it's always good to learn from the professionals and not always take media and um, pet store advice because they don't have your animal's best interests at heart. Okay. Oh, Tracy. Rabbits will be fine if you just feed them pellets. That's all they need in life, just pellets. Oh, I don't even know where to start on this one. Debunk the myth. <laughs> it's probably the worst thing I've ever heard. Um, rabbits need fresh water. Rabbits need unlimited head. We actually get rabbits turned in quite a bit that are seriously overweight because they've been fed a diet of pellets and they're just obese. And it takes us months to actually get the weight off them once they do uh, get super fat. And um, sometimes rabbits just can't even stomach pellets. We've actually had some rabbits that we have adopted out, and it says no pellets, hay and water only. Good. Um, pellets were formulated by um, uh, the industry for um, 
testing on animals as a easy an easy form of nutrition for them, so they didn't have to provide um, a lot of work or husbandry. So it again is not is not um, a full diet. Um, okay. So let's see. Um, here, I'm going to answer this one because this one makes me just disgusted. You want to go to number three? Number three, the myth. Unwanted pet rabbits will have a good natural life if you let them loose outside rather than rehoming them or taking them to a shelter. Okay. Just going to say this. Letting rabbits loose is not setting them free. It's instant death. Literally, you have less than 24 hours. Um, for that rabbit to be captured before it becomes um, a snack, hit by a car, die of heat stroke, or ingest something that they um, typically can't um, ingest and die of some sort of toxin. Listen, I hope everybody's watching from all over the place, but we are currently here in South Florida, and it is about 90 degrees, and the heat index makes it feel like 105 Rabbits can't um, regulate their body heat, um, so we have to give them a uh, appropriate living environment to regulate that. Um, rabbits are prey animals, so they <laughs> come here, back. Um, They're prey animals, so they're um, used to be hunted for food. So they get really scared really quickly, and actually, if they get nervous enough, they can actually um, pass away from a heart attack. So we've got to be really careful with what we do. Um, so talking to local rescues, talking to um, shelter organizations, um, talking with friends to try to find a better option than letting them loose. That's just not acceptable. Finger wag, not acceptable. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Oh, Tracy, I am a parent and I think my five-year-old should have a rabbit because they love hugging and squeezing on things. Oh, another myth. <laughs> Um, I will say up front, though, there are some children that are younger that because of the way they are raised and their personalities, they will do great. And their rabbits. And their parents. Their parents. Yes. Exactly. But that said, generally, rabbits are too delicate of a pet to have for younger children. They're not a good first pet. Um, they have delicate bones. Um of course, like Esmeralda has bigger bones than Merida, so Merida is more likely to get hurt by a child than Esmeralda is, but still, it's not a good idea. Um, rabbits kick, rabbits bite, and in general, if you want to get your small child a rabbit, please get them a stuffed rabbit. So I say that, and I have met a lot of children that are wonderful, like Tracy said, and um, a lot of parents that are just wonderful um so being with that if you're looking to adopt a rabbit um and you have children the best thing to note is that you as the parent are going to be the primary caregiver you're going to be doing the cleaning you're going to be ensuring that that animal um, receives proper um, nutrition and um, veterinary visits and whatnot not meaning that the kids can't help out you just have to be responsible this is a living breathing animal um, and we need to treat them with as much respect as um, as any other other living, breathing thing. Don't touch me like that, she said. I scare her. Oh, excuse me, I'm having a snack here on Sarah's knee. Um, and right now we're given some cookies because um, we want them to be able to be visible. These are little Oxbow treats. So Oxbow is a wonderful brand. We love Oxbow. They give back to us all the time. Um, so that's what they're snacking on, if you're wondering. Um, okay, let's go. So... Um, Rabbits can be kept in a cage all day. So wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. As you can tell by Esmeralda and Merida, they need lots of exercise. Um, ideally, a rabbit should never be in a cage. Ideally. We do understand that some people put them in cages, and I have to be honest, mine used to go in night lockup is what I called it because I knew I would get a good night's sleep if they were safe and they were not roaming around getting themselves into trouble. But generally, they need a big space where they can run and they can play. And if you give them that space, you're going to see lots of fun things. Uh, we call them binkies. Oh, they're so cute. And rabbits like to kick up their heels when they're happy and they're running around. So that's the only way you're going to see a binky is to put them in a large area. With that being said, anytime um, you're looking for um, a safe way to house a rabbit, if you have other pets, 
Um, if, uh, you know, it's just not ideal, uh, you've got small children, you got cats, you know, oh, photobomb. Um, <laughs> the best thing you can do is um, <laughs> go Merida, uh, is find a nice, um, a nice area that um, is <laughs> a nice area that has um, some good foot traffic because uh <laughs> Rabbits are super social, <laughs> um, and they love to be around people. But at the same time, we can keep them safe by putting them in a like a little puppy playpen. You can get a top to put on it. There's lots of large caging options that keep them safe at the same time. Um, talking to pet stores is usually not your best uh, mode of education, as um, they're just selling these animals um, and uh, items uh, just to make a profit. Calling your local humane society, calling your local rabbit rescue, they're going to give you a lot of great information. There's probably a lot of wonderful stuff out there at the pet stores. You just need to weed through what what's appropriate and what's not. Um, let's see. Okay, Tracy, stop me with something else. Uh, what else you got? Let's see. How about rabbits absolutely love to be held and cuddled? Can we talk about that a little bit? Not really. Oh, okay. All right. So rabbits, ideally... You'll meet a few here and there that um, kind of put this put this to a different standards. But rabbits ideally do not like to be held and confined because they're used to being uh, hunted for food by um, predatory animals. So we want to be able to give them, like right now, how Esmeralda's just kind of coming up to me. Of course, I got snacks, so that's like cool. But she's coming up to me. I'm letting her do her own thing. I'm not putting it upon her to um, to be here with me. I'm giving her her own space, and she likes that. So animals are going to be more apt to um, be your friend and come close to you and give you affection if you allow them to come to you. Um, so we want to um, avoid any serious injury by uh, pushing, on, pushing the hugging and the cuddling and the snuggling and letting them hug and, and cuddle you. Um, rabbits. Um, are the boss, and we are just their slaves. And they all have unique personalities. Exactly. It doesn't... You will have a cuddler rabbit, but not as often as you have a rabbit that enjoys being touched, but on their own terms. Precisely. Okay. Let's talk about stinky, stinky, stinky rabbit butts. Um, a lot of people I see um, surrendering rabbits here at our shelter say, oh, the cage is just so stinky. I cannot handle it any longer. Tracy, what are some things that you can do to help your rabbit's habitat and your rabbit um, smell less? Does that make sense? Well, I would say, number one, rabbits don't smell. They don't like to smell. They like to clean themselves a lot. And if you provide them with a fresh litter box daily, and some of the bigger rabbits, maybe sometimes twice a day, um, the rabbits will be clean and everything will smell fresh. What can you do for them health-wise to help them smell less and maybe behaviorally not act out? Well, um, sometimes the males have a particular stink and they like to mark because they're not neutered. And once they are neutered, um, they tend to mark less. I'm not saying it completely goes away, but it definitely lessens that. Um, even the females being spayed will help attitude and sometimes you know if you have a pair of a male and a female and they're both um, they're both um, neutered and spayed then uh, things are going to smell a lot fresher in your house and on the same mark as spay and neuter um, man spaying and neutering they it's a saves lives because you are not um, contributing to um, pet overpopulation um, like we said third most surrendered animal in the United States um, their gestation period is only 31 days. Can you imagine being pregnant for a month and just blowing out babies and left and right? Speaking of, <laughs> my baby's mother actually came in with a baby mm -hmm. and was pregnant again. Surprise! Yeah, yeah. so it, it happens. Um, and we all know that saying, you know, breeding like rabbits. It's totally true. Um, okay, so spaying and neutering. Um, it's going to increase. Oh, we got an escape. 
Hold on. Let me get you. We don't want them loose with uh, Merida and Esmeralda because they're not friends yet. So <laughs> um, it's going to increase our lifespan. It's going to make us healthier. We're going to avoid that testicular and that ovarian cancer. Um, uh, it's going to make us happier. We're not going to have bunnitudes. All rabbits have bunnitudes, but we're not going to have it as bad. You're about to have an escape. Um, it's just it's a no-brainer. We offer that service here at our facility at a low cost. However, um, right now during um, during our uh, yeah, uh, pandemic, pandemic um, we have suspended uh, that that um, program because it's it's not necessarily um, essential at this time. We're trying to provide more essential um, services. Okay, moving right along. I could talk about this all day long. Oh, rabbits like to be bathed regularly. <laughs> Please do not bathe your rabbit. Uh, there really is no reason to bathe a rabbit unless there is some medical issue and a vet advises you to bathe a rabbit. But that said, there are many other ways to get a rabbit clean other than bathing. Correct. So, um, occasionally we'll give butt baths. That's right. You heard me, butt baths. Anybody want to come over for that spa service here at the Humane Society of the Treasure Coast? Uh, we, we give butt baths to bunnies that have um, messy bottoms at times, um, but that's really the extent. Um, getting them wet scares them, and it also takes them a really long time um, to get dry. So we don't want any um, ailments as such as, uh, you know, catching a cold, upper respiratory, pneumonia or something, just because we thought that maybe they needed a bath. So just bunk that right now. Um, let's see. Okay, this is a good one. We've got this cool little device here in between Tracy and I. It's a rabbit litter box. Um, they are really clean animals, and they want to be clean. Um, so this is a uh, just a cat litter box, and we've got um, newspaper in the very bottom of it. You can use. There's a lot of different um, other options. They've got like a, a litter called Carefresh. Um, there's puppy pee pads. Uh, there's like different kinds of um, absorbing items. Uh, we just need to make sure that they're safe for rabbits. And then we have our hay on top. There's lots of poopies in here. You can't really see them, but um, rabbits like to urinate and defecate where they eat, but they will not eat soiled food. So this is like a home base. So it's cool. You can like have a snack in this corner and go ahead and diddle in this corner. And it's totally acceptable in the rabbit community. Um, these guys are almost completely potty trained. Uh, oh, thank you. Spay and neuter is going to help with this. Um, but there's great little things that you can do to help. Like this is an um, organic metal blend by Wiki Pets, And you can just kind of trickle a little bit in there. Kind of just assist them to want to go into the litter box. Um, but I love helping people with litter box training because sometimes they're at their wits end and they're just like, you know, this rabbit's going potty all over the place. And we teach them the right way to litter train. And it's like... They have a whole new love for their animal. Um, so, yes, they can totally be um, litter trained. Um, okay, rabbits as, um, are they an expensive pet? So, here at the Humane Society, we have an adoption fee of only $25 for rabbits. Um, and we regularly do adoption specials where they're free or reduced. They're always spayed and neutered. They always um, have a microchip. And then we also tattoo their little bellies just to indicate that they have been altered. Um, in the event that they find themselves at another clinic or another um, organization and they need to um, have a positive um, identification for spay and neuter and they haven't checked the microchip. With that being said, obtaining or adopting your pet is the cheapest part of owning a rabbit. Um, we're talking about proper nutrition. We're talking about um, enrichment items, caging or housing, um, and then vet visits. So these guys are considered... You're really hamming it up and listen. <laughs> you better. All right. Nice. Spoil them right. Um, yeah. Um, so vet visits. So these guys are considered, even though you can find them everywhere and they're at every single pet store readily available and easily, easily sold uh, with no questions asked. They're considered exotic pets um, as far as the veterinary community is concerned. So you need to find um, a veterinarian that is comfortable and that you feel comfortable with. Um, treating your pet because there's so many medications that uh, dogs and cats uh, normally get that are extremely toxic to these guys. Um, and we just need to make sure that we're giving them the best the best option to succeed um, while living their lives. So uh, with that being said, you just need to 
put a little thought into it. Um, and then you guys should, you know, should be fine. Um, let's see what else, Tracy. So rabbits, what is their, um, what's their life expectancy? Uh, generally eight to 12 years is the life expectancy of a rabbit. However, spayed and neutered. Spayed and neutered. Yeah, true. Yep. Um, however, some can live much longer than that. Um, I have a friend whose grand bunny reached 15 and I have a personal rabbit that is actually 14 at the moment. So that's really cool because, um, it, you know, it's not a short-term pet. So this is an animal that, you know, you, your kids can, you know, grow up with that you can have as a family pet. It's not something that's just going to last for like one to three years. Now, if you keep your animal outside in a hutch, um, that expectancy is, it's much lower. And um, it's sad because there's predators out there and um, other things like heat stroke we talked about earlier. So keeping them inside is the best thing. Um, spay and neuter is the best thing. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh, okay, cool. So um, when rabbits are happy, they purr. They do. They do. Not like a cat. They grind their teeth, mm -hmm. and it's it's very interesting. It's um, a very quiet sound. It's very though. quiet, but they um, it's usually when they're super content, um, they're very happy, um, or they're doing something that they like, or they're having some snacks. So that's really cool. Um, goes along with the binky, um, where they they jump and they do like the Superman with their back legs. They also will flop over on their sides when yeah. they're really happy and content. Yeah, it's really cute. Um, I'm going to stop for just a second and see if there's any questions pending. And if not, we'll just keep on keeping on. Okay, no questions right now. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, so let's see. Oh, what's something gross that rabbits do that's completely normal for them? They eat their poop. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's not quite their poop. Yes. Talk to us why. What's it called? Um, rabbits produce something that are they're called cecotropes. Um, it's usually done in the middle of the night. Um, they kind of look like teeny tiny soft squishy clusters of grapes. And it is to keep their uh, stomach, their gut, in balance. So they will produce these and they will eat these. Usually the only time you do see them is when they're producing too many of them and they are not eating them. Um, some cases that is, a lot of cases it's their diet, whether they've had too many treats that day or in my case, uh, somebody stole somebody else's food last night and got too many pellets. So we had a couple um, lingering cecotropes this morning. So those are interesting. They're also called night droppings, just layman's terms. Um, okay. Oh, on the same, um, topic of poop. Let me get my glove on. Rabbit people are a special breed. We're a little weird. <laughs> We're talking about poop. I'm going to get my glove on and I'm going to show you some poops. This is weird, but I want to show you what's normal and what's not. Okay. And if you don't own a rabbit, uh, one thing to say about regular rabbit poops is they're hard. They're never squishy. For a regular rabbit poop, they're never squishy like a cat or a dog. So it's not a blockage or we're, um, we need to be groomed or we've got some sort of dietary issue. Um, show you what a normal poop looks like. This is a normal poopy. This is a healthy poop. This is a good poop. So. We want to be looking for, um, you know, nice, big, healthy poops that don't have a lot of hair in them. Um, they're, you know, not too soggy, like Tracy said. So poop can tell you a lot. It's very interesting, poop. Um, let's see. One thing to say about the poops, though, if you see, uh, we call them pearls. Yes. Where the poops are actually connected to each other um, with fur in between each of the poops. Um, this is a bad thing. This really means that your rabbit needs to get groomed like now and not later. I'm getting photobombed here. Um, so it's really important if you ever do see the pearls um, to take action quickly or your rabbit could end up with something called spaces. I'm sorry. I can't see that. What does that say? It's gone. Somebody's asking a question. It's really hard to see. 
all I see is find a bunny. Okay, what? Okay, what do you, what do you, okay. Um, okay, finding a bunny meaning, are we finding a wild rabbit? Or are we finding a domesticated rabbit? If you find a wild rabbit, so let's talk about um, baby wild bunnies. Um, so if you find a baby wild bunny um, and it's in a hole, it's in your backyard, your dog just sniffed it out, stop, drop and walk away. They're there for a reason. Mom has put them in that hole. Mom will come back, um, usually um, dusk and dawn, and feed babes. They're completely fine. Try to um, keep the area penned away from your pets. Um, the only time you really need to intervene with a wild rabbit is if it looks like it's got a sunken belly, if it looks like it's got some sort of injury. Um, uh, domesticated rabbits, uh, take a lot longer um, to be weaned and be ready to be out on their own um, than wild rabbits. Wild rabbits, usually once their eyes are open um, and they're um, out of their little their little holes, they're ready to go. They, they uh, mature much quicker than um, our domesticated friends. Now, if you find a domesticated rabbit outside, which happens quite often and is quite disturbing, um, you need to, A, you call animal control or bring the rabbit by um, a veterinarian's office to have it scanned for a microchip because that is that's a new practice microchipping rabbits but it is happening so um, that's a good way to start um, also you can um, post on your local lost and found pages see if somebody's missing it um, a photo of it see um, you know if you can find out owner rather than bring it to a facility um, in the event that that's you know to no avail or you've got an animal at home that really will not tolerate uh, holding on to that pet, you can call your local humane society, uh, animal control organization, whatnot, and they're gonna either be able to assist you by taking in that animal or they're gonna be able to try to um, give you another option um, for placing that animal or having it put into a you know an, an adoption situation. So that's a good question. Um, so rabbits are, um, like we said, okay, so are rabbits nocturnal, Tracy? Not at all. No. What are they? They are crepuscular, which means they are most active dusk and dawn every day. Correct. So they're kind of going all the time, having fun. <laughs> and that's kind of one of their traits from their wild ancestors, yeah. too. If you've noticed, you'll see bunnies out in the early morning or mm -hmm. just as the sun is starting to go down and not during the daytime. Yep. So they, they share that with their, their wild friends. And rabbits are not rodents. Um, they're actually lagomorphs. And um, although they do have some traits um, that are similar to rodents, they're actually, um, they uh, have more in common with horses as far as um, their uh, digestive system, dietary, um, things of that nature. On the same, uh, same coin, um, Rabbits have uh, open-rooted teeth, which means they're consistently growing, um, and they need things like hay, hay. Um, uh, acceptable treats and things to chew to keep their teeth ground down. If not, then we need some veterinarian intervention um, to assist with that. But um, it's very interesting. Uh, most people don't don't know that they they've got those open-rooted teeth. But um, let's see what else. Is there anything else? Um, I think we've really touched on everything here. Um, again, sorry guys, we had some technical difficulties. Um, and no, a bunny did not chew through a cable. <laughs> I was gonna say, did a bunny chew through a cord? Um, we were just kind of closing up. Um, if we're just gonna hang out here with the buns for a little bit longer and let them chill here. But um, if anybody has any questions, comments, uh, anything, um, now's the time to do it. If not, we are always here um, as an organization to help you. Um, obviously, free of charge, we want to be able to um, give you the best uh, the best information to succeed as a rabbit owner um, and to um, give them the best long lives. Um, so we're here 24-7, 365, email. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, drop the email address that you can um, get in touch with us. And then um, we're available by phone. We're open um, seven days a week. Obviously, right now during the pandemic, we've got some 
um, alternate hours, but um, we are available for you. Um, we do a lot of things here. We do bunny speed dating. So if you've got a rabbit already that's already um, spayed or neutered and has been um, checked for fur lice and mites, um, we can do bunny speed dating to see if uh, we can find a compatible friend. Um, we also uh, work with uh, folks that already have rabbits to do grooming for low cost here at the shelter. So that's a wonderful option. Any questions right now? Tell me, know me. Ooh. Okay, so the question is, what are some good toys for bunnies? Tracy's gonna show you some items we kind of got hanging around. This is actually a cat ball. They're sold at a lot of dollar stores. Um, but if you see, the openings are large enough that a rabbit can actually get their teeth in it and they can toss it and throw it around, which they do like to do. Yeah, and that's only a dollar. Um, there's also a lot of like specialty toys um, that you can buy online. Um, but again, you can make stuff at home. Um, I think our next video that we're going to do probably next week um, is going to be about like enrichment um, for rabbits and um, guinea pigs and other small animals. So we can show you some um, cheap or free ideas um, of things that you can um, utilize as toys. So stay tuned for that. Um, this is also something really cool. Let me snag this. This is from our friend at Wiki Pets. Um, this is actually an enrichment ball, you can see, and there's a little spot right here where you can um, change the size of the opening. You can add treats, um, and they have to push it around in order to get the snacks out, um, and they really like that. So, again, we want to be safe with rabbit toys. We want to make sure that they're not too small, that they can um, get into their mouths and um, choke on. Touching on that really quickly, rabbits cannot do a few things. They cannot vomit. They cannot pass gas, okay, and um, they can't burp. So what goes in has got to be able to come out the other end. So we've got to be safe with um, what they ingest. Um, also, things that are color-treated um, or pressure-treated wood, we need to make sure that we're not using any kind of toxic coloring. Um, we're not using any kind of pesticides on those items. So just being really smart about, um, you know, what, what's going in their mouths. Um, a great resource. I call it the rabbit Bible. Anything anyone's ever told you about, if it's not on rabbit.org, I'll believe it. It's not, it's not the truth. <laughs> okay. We have another question. Um, are rabbits good in pairs? I'm going to let Tracy touch on that a little bit. Um, pairs, yes. Um, it really depends on you as far as the amount of time that you can spend with your rabbit um rabbits need companionship they absolutely do um they do better in pairs um just because they've got a buddy mm -hmm. um every so often there will be a rabbit that doesn't want a buddy um and i have one of those and but she's my office rabbit since i work from home so she's with me for like eight hours every day so i'm technically her buddy um, she has had 30 speed dates and she has turned down every speed date that she has ever had. So that said, she's not a good in pair, but most of the time, like 99% of the time, rabbits are happier in pairs. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's something that we can help you with again. Hi. Um, we can help you to try to find a bonding friend or, um, you know, we can assess like what, what your home life is like and what rabbit's going to be really good for you. So um, in layman's terms, yes, they're great in pairs, but there's always a gray area and that's with anything. And one thing to remember is just because you pick a certain rabbit to be a mate for your rabbit does not mean that that um, just because your rabbit or you pick a certain rabbit for your rabbit, that doesn't mean that that is going to be your rabbit's friend. It's up to your rabbit. And like I said, my one rabbit had like 30 speed dates before he picked his mate. And then I have another one that never did pick a mate. So exactly. it just depends on your rabbit. And it, you're out there to make your rabbit happy, not you. Precisely. <laughs> you're last. 
Um, we also want to give a, a shout out and a thanks to San Diego House Rabbit Society. Um, they're another great sponsor um, that helps us here at the shelter. Um, yeah, they're wonderful. We love them. Um, and we think that um, any organization that is um, promoting uh, rabbit um, welfare, adoption, spay and neuter, they're cool in our book. And so um, Gainesville, Gainesville Rabbit Rescue and um, San Diego House Rabbit um, are wonderful folks and we really, we love to have them on board with us. Um, and we're going to miss you guys because we're not going to see you at Southeast Bun Fest this year. We had to cancel because of the pandemic, but Hey, we're going to be back next year. Bigger we're, and better than ever. Bigger and better than ever. We're still going to have it as, um, our 10 year anniversary, even though it should be 11 and I could cry. Um, <laughs> but it's going to be awesome. Um, check us out on Facebook. Um, we are, uh, at, Southeast Bun Fest, um, just put it in your little search bar up there. Um, got all the great information on the Facebook page. We also have a um, website. You can go to hstc1.org and then you can pop down to our events and get right on the Southeast Bun Fest um, website and access to the Facebook page. So listen, we just wanna thank everyone for taking the time out of their day um, and time from going from the window to the wall, to the refrigerator, <laughs> to the bed <laughs> during this uh, pandemic time to, um, hey, educate yourself, to talk and to spread information. That's what we're here. Um, we're here to do. And we hope to bring you some more, um, some more info and cool little, uh, dialogue like this. Tracy and I are a fun pair. I want to think, um, I got some cool mom jokes. <laughs> but um, anyways, uh, like always, you can reach us. Um, I'm going to let uh, Candace Callahan pop in our um, our our info there. But um, we're going to go ahead and uh, sign off now. And we just want to thank everybody. Okay. Somebody was just asking about grooming days at the shelter. So unfortunately, right now during this, and I hate to say this because this is so weird what's going on. It really stinks, doesn't it? I just want to hang out with rabbit people and, you know. And groom. And groom. I miss grooming. <laughs> um, normally, we have rabbit grooming available here at the shelter by appointment. You just give us a ring, and um, they shoot you over to myself or Tracy, and we can make you an appointment. We do um, rabbit uh, toenail clipping, gland cleaning, brush outs, um, uh, the occasional... Uh, Butt trim. Butt trim. <laughs> um, so there's, there's long haired ones. Yeah, so there's no real set days, but if you're inquiring about that, give us a ring, 772 223 8822, and we can hook you up with a date and a time, um, and hopefully this. And trust us, stuff I'm in done. contact with the bunny groomers here, and we are dying to get back to work. So yeah. there will be grooming appointments available as soon as we can. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, if your animal's in dire need, give us a ring. We'll probably be able to work something out. I'll, you know, come out there in a gas mask and covered in PPE and clip your rabbit's toenails from afar or something. But anyways, so again, we're going to try to sign off again. <laughs> we thank you guys for, thank um, you. for listening to us and, uh, you know, like Bob Barker says, stay in your, your pets. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.